Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises belong to Him, the Rabb, the Lord Almighty, the sustainer of the heavens and the earth, the one who hears the cries of the oppressed, the prayers of the desperate and the tears of the anguished. He is the light in the gloomy darkness, the refuge in the painful trials and calamities. He is the ultimate hope in the seemingly dark and endless abyss of despair. Blessings and salutations. Salatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddini amma ba'd. Blessings and salutations upon our noble messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the bearer of mercy, the role model of patience and steadfastness, the lighthouse of hope amidst the storm of adversities. His life, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, an epitome of resilience and spiritual fortitude, guiding us through the rugged terrains of trials, calamities and tribulations. My dear beloved congregation, as we gather here in this serene and beautiful masjid facing the ocean, let us not forget the smoky skies and blood-stained lands that have become the harsh reality of our brethren, of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. The piercing cries of the innocent, the heart-wrenching pleas of the mothers, the silent tears of the orphaned, and the brave defiance of the oppressed, of the mazloom, echo through the fields of olive trees, resonating across the seas and reaching the inner chambers, the inner depths of our hearts. The savage brutality, the harrowing violence, and the cruel oppression, the cruel aggression and injustice faced by our brethren is a stark manifestation of a world that has strayed far away from the path of compassion, from the path of love and the path of justice. Every explosion, every home demolished, every innocent life snuffed out narrates a tale of unyielding resilience, of a, an unbreakable spirit, of an unwavering faith in the face of overwhelming oppression. Our hearts tremble with sorrow, our souls ignite with righteous anger, and our hands raise in desperate dua, in desperate supplication for the skies, for the heavens to bear witness to the injustice. We pray for the land to testify against the oppressors, and for the divine intervention, for the divine help to mend the broken, to heal the wounded, and to liberate and free the oppressed. As we delve into this painful reality, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let this sermon be a moment of solemn reflection, a journey into the essence of our deeds, our good deeds, the purity of our intentions, and the alignment of our hearts with the divine teachings of Islam. We find in the prophetic teachings divine commands at junctures like this to reflect, to introspect, to look within ourselves, and to act accordingly. Listen to me attentively. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, he forewarned us. The hadith is recorded in the book of Imam Abu Dawood Rahimahullah. Yushikul Umam, 
أن تداعى عليكم كما تداعى الأكلة إلى قصعتها فقال قائل ومن قلة نحن يومئذ قال بل أنتم يومئذ كثير ولكنكم غثاء كغثاء السيل الله أكبر The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam He forewarns us A prophecy of the Messenger A time will come When nations will beckon Will call each other against you To attack you Just like people call each other To partake in a feast To partake at a banquet To partake at a meal and upon hearing this, a Sahabi, he inquires, he asks, Ya Rasulullah, will this be due to our scant numbers at that time? Wamin qillatin nahnu yawma idh? Will we be scant in number? Will we be few in number at that time? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responds, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ كَثِيرٌ On the contrary, you will be numerous. You will be billions in number. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَى But you will be akin to the frock carried away by a torrential rain. You will be like scum. You know, when it rains, and we've been experiencing rainy weather, when it rains and you have floods, you see the froth, you have rubbish on the top, you have froth on the top, scum on the top, ghutha, ghutha sail, you will be like froth, you will be like scum carried away by a torrent. Allahu Akbar. The words of our Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, echo through the annals of time. And at that juncture, the Prophet ﷺ also went on to say, Allah will extract the awe of you, O my Ummah, from the hearts of the enemies, and He will cast wahan into your hearts, wahan. So immediately someone asks, O Messenger of Allah, what is wahan? And as I go on with the sermon, I will touch on the explanation of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to wahan. But my dear brothers, my dear sisters, do we not see the prophecy of the Messenger ﷺ manifesting before our very eyes as we see nations banding together, enemies coming together to subjugate to oppress and to obliterate the dignity, the rights, and the lives of the Muslim Ummah. Allahu Akbar. And look at the painful question put forth by the Sahaba. Ya Rasulullah, will this be due to our scant numbers at that time? Will, we, will it be because we are going to be few in number at that time? And the response of the Prophet strikes a chord in our hearts where the Prophet says, on the contrary, you will be numerous but akin to froth. How profound are these words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look around you, my dear beloved congregation. Our numbers have swelled. This last Hajj, record numbers in millions. Hujjaj gathering from around the world. Our numbers have swelled, yet our impact has dwindled. Our bodies are present, yes, but our spirits seem absent. Our hearts beat, but they do not beat in unity. They do not beat in unison. We are fractured, we are scattered. Our brethren, our brothers and sisters in Palestine, they stand defiant amidst the torrent of tyranny. Their spirit is unbroken. Their resolve unshaken. Yet the ummah at large around them seems to have drifted like the froth, like the scum. 
the ummah is carried away by the currents of worldly affairs materialistic possessions and fear and look at the look at the example of the of the messenger in the hadith the tashbih the example is food in the hadith they will call one another like coming to partake of food and they will attack you like partaking of food you know why because food my dear brothers and sisters food cannot fight back food is powerless now when you go home for lunch you will have a grand spread in front of you perhaps that food cannot do anything but look at you as you choose what you want to eat and if you choose to eat that food the food cannot do anything if you choose to discard it the food cannot do anything if you choose to chew it and throw it spit it if you will the food cannot do anything allahu akbar so we will become powerless now coming back to the hadith the prophet mentions wahan right allah will extract the awe of you of the muslim ummah from the hearts of your foes of your enemies and cast wahan into your hearts so what is this wahan that has ensnared our hearts my dear brothers and sisters it will not be because we do not have wealth today the muslims have wealth in trillions i'm not talking about the sri lankan rupee i'm talking about in dollars we have wealth it will not be because we do not have education mashallah we have very educated people it will not be because we do not have assets we own buildings we own skyscrapers we own assets it will not be because we do not have assets it will not be because we do not have influence oh we are in powerful positions of power and authority it will be wahan the love for this worldly life and the dislike for death that will be cast into our hearts and because of this we will drift away from the teachings of the quran and the sunnah my dear brothers and sisters against the backdrop of what's happening in palestine all of us we have different perspectives and we point to the left we point to the right we point to the nations that have gathered against us oh this country that country and we blame them but the origin of humiliation it is because of us it is what allah has sent down upon us again let me give you another hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam the prophet tells us idha tabay'atum bil 'ina wa akhadtum adnab al baqar wa raditum bil zar' and the narration goes on i'm going to give you a rough translation of it the prophet says if you indulge in riba and in the hadith the prophet mentions ina which is the smallest form of riba if i were to quickly define it it is to sell something on credit to someone on a condition that you will buy it back for a lower price riba and then you take hold of the tails of cattle and keep yourself busy with agriculture in other words you're busy growing your worldly assets so much to the extent that you forget the teachings of allah you forget the teachings of the quran you don't care what kind of transactions you get involved in you don't care how you amass your wealth all that matters is amassing wealth then the prophet tells us allah will send down upon you humiliation and he will not remove this humiliation till you return to your religion till you return to your deen in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he tells us never do people withhold the charity from their wealth except that allah withholds the heavens in the sense it will not rain it will not rain 
or even if it rains it's not going to be beneficial rain subhanallah you won't believe it the past few days it's been raining here right and you might be thinking mashallah we are blessed but you must go to the outskirts to the villages where your crops are being sourced where your rice is coming from there was no rain it was dry as a bone so there's no point in it raining here we pray for barakah filled rain rain of abundance rain that does not cause harm rain that does not destroy and when you withhold your charity allah withholds the rain and the prophet says if it were not for the animals it would never rain allahu akbar and because of our misdeeds because of our ill deeds even the animals suffer even the innocent suffer our brethren in palestine are suffering it is a call for each and every one of us to introspect stop the blame game yes you stand up for the oppressed but along with that introspect it is a call for us to mend our own ways subhanallah my dear brothers and sisters our brethren there they're standing strong their faith is unshaken their spirit is unbroken there are videos surfacing of how they accept the decree of allah there was a video of a lady who was a nurse most of you would have seen it she was treating the wounded and as she's treating the wounded what happens she gets the news that her husband has been killed does she break down in that video does she question the decree of allah does she utter blasphemous things does she does she say why is allah doing this to us why is allah testing us like this no instead she makes the we sign the victory sign in, with both her hands and she comes running out saying abshir abshir glad tidings glad tidings congratulations my husband is a martyr my husband is a martyr this is the unbreakable spirit of the palestinians but you and i here we are we're not in the conflict zones and we are questioning allah we are questioning the mercy of allah we are saying what is allah doing is allah sleeping where is allah why is allah doing this why does so much of evil exist and so on and so forth questioning the divine decree of allah questioning the mercy of allah questioning the plan of allah we need to get our priorities straight my dear brothers and sisters it is a test for them in a different way and for us in a different way it is a test for every believer what is happening for those in the conflict zones it is a test of its own for them and for us who are outside the conflict zones it is a test for us by allah as to how we are reacting as to how we are responding as to how we perceive it allahu akbar coming back to the hadith you know that statement of the prophet it strikes a chord on the contrary you will be kafir you will be vast in number multitudes but akin to froth allahu akbar akin to froth go back my dear brothers and sisters go back across the golden history of our deen the battle of badr 313 sahaba the enemy of makkah the quraysh thousand in number and the victory belonged to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the battle of uhud 700 against the enemy 3000 due to a costly mistake the muslims suffered but initially victory belonged to this ummah in summary the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he stationed 50 archers 50 archers under the command of abdullah ibn jubair radiyallahu anhu and he gave them clear cut instructions look here this mountain pass this valley should not be left empty under any circumstances even if you see that we have attained victory we have become victorious and even if you see that the enemy has fled in defeat 
do not leave this place and if you see that the Muslims have been defeated and the enemy has prevailed upon us do not come to assist us in other words do not leave this mountain pass the Prophet Sallallahu stressed so much upon this matter that he said even if you see vultures tearing away at our bodies at our remains do not re leave from this place until you receive the order to leave the battle intensified nine flag bearers of the enemy took up their flag but each one of them was slain the muslims continued to advance further the muslim army broke rank and scattered seeing the enemy army flee the muslims now began gathering the spoils of war they were celebrating victory the archers who were stationed on the mountain pass they can now see the muslim army celebrating they have won the enemy has fled now they ask abdullah ibn jubair radiallahu an victory has been secured the muslims are collecting the spoils of war let us go and join the army as well abdullah radiallahu an who reminded them sternly of the strict instructions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said we are not supposed to leave this pass under any circumstances however the archers who are along with him they started to interpret the directive of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant that the mountain pass should not be left empty until security had been fully prevailed. Now that victory has been achieved and security is ours, there is nothing wrong with us leaving the mountain pass. And only about five or six companions remained steadfast with Abdullah ibn Jubair radiallahu anhu all the others from the 50 archers left the mountain pass at that juncture Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu he was not a Muslim at that time he immediately he had the eye of a hawk strategist commander he saw that the mountain pass was empty immediately he gathered his cavalry despite being defeated he gathers his cavalry and heads to the mountain pass he heads to the mountain pass with a few riders left from his contingent bought two detachments one by him and another by ikrima ibn abi jahal the son of abu jahal two detachments quickly reached the mountain pass they martyred abdullah ibn jubair radiallahu anhu and the few archers the handful of archers that remained with abdullah radiallahu anhu and then they attacked the muslim army from the rear from the rear allahu akbar unmindful of this attack the muslim army was completely caught off guard they were celebrating they were dividing the spoils of war they were caught off guard the situation created a lot of confusion a lot of panic so much to the extent the muslim army was so overwhelmed according to historians the situation the tables turned so quickly so drastically that they the muslims were unable to even distinguish between friend and foe between friend and enemy allahu akbar but initially victory belonged to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a very costly mistake and this shows us the importance of obedience the importance of submission to the words of allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam battle of khandaq 3000 muslims the enemy 24,000 victory belonged to this ummah the battle of sham the muslims were thousand and the enemy 100,000 and the victory belonged to this ummah the battle of muta muslims were 3,000 and the enemy byzantine were 200,000 victory still belonged to this ummah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam my, be, my, my beloved congregation this is a moment of introspection a moment of awakening let us delve into the depths of our hearts let us weed out this love that we have for this temporary worldly gains yes you can benefit you can live a good life you can live comfortably 
but do not let it take hold of your heart and grip you to the extent that these worldly gains become your priority. Look beyond the worldly gains. Look towards the eternal life of the hereafter, to the promise of Allah, the true promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. The trials that our brethren are facing in those lands beckon us and awaken us to rekindle our spirits, my dear brothers and sisters, our spirits of collective responsibility, to stand firm for justice, to stand against injustice, to extend our hands in aid, each and every one of us. You might be thinking, what can I do? It's a subjective thing. If you have wealth, help with your wealth. If you have influence, help with your influence. If you have authority, help with your authority. If you have diplomacy, help with your diplomacy. If you don't have anything, you have dua. Raise your hands to the heavens and cry out in desperate dua, seeking divine help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, our strength lies in unity. Our strength lies in our resilience in our faith. Do not question the plan of Allah. Do not question the decree of Allah. Do not question the mercy of Allah. Do not question the divine justice of Allah. It lies in our faith, in our Iman. It lies in our tawakkul, our trust in Allah. And victory comes through submission. Victory comes through obedience. Victory comes through submission and obedience to the words of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second hadith that I shared, this humiliation will be removed from us. The Prophet tells us in that hadith, he tells us how it will be removed if you turn back to your religion. Turn back to your religion. Not in a way that you have interpreted religion, my dear brother, my dear sister. You need to go back to the pure religion taught to us by the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Today, each and every one of us, we are practicing our own versions of the religion, Allahu Akbar. And we're thinking, oh, but I'm practicing. You need to go back to the religion, the deen taught to us by Allah and His Messenger. The five pillars of Islam, the six articles of faith, Look at the hadith of Jibreel, Mal Islam, the five pillars of Islam, the first pillar, Shahadat an la ilaha illallah, to bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. The first article of faith, An tu'mina billah, to believe in Allah. And ihsan is, An ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarah, fa illam takun tarah, fa innahu yaraq. It is to worship Allah as if you see Him, but you obviously cannot see Allah. But you must worship Him as if you can see Him, and even though you do not see Him, He most definitely sees you. So this Iman, it needs to be indomitable, it needs to be unbreakable with regards to Allah. Cast away all the other idols in your heart. You might be thinking, Sheikh, no, you've got it wrong. I don't believe in idols. Oh, my dear brother. But what about the idol of money that is in your heart? We worship it. We worship that idol of money in our hearts. We all worship it. What about the idol of fame? We all like fame. We worship fame. But you might be thinking, no, 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 no. Money doesn't really matter to me. Fame doesn't matter to me. Then perhaps we are ensnared in the worship of the idol of ego. We worship our own egos. We worship ourselves. We worship ourselves. So this is shirk. You have associated all this along with Allah. When Islam tells you to bear witness that La ilaha illallah, there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. Now do you understand the depth of that statement? The depth of that statement. It is not your job that provides. It is not your business that provides. It's not your assets that provide. It is not your sources of income that provide. All of that can change in the twinkling of an eye. It is Razzaq. It is Allah who provides. So we need to get our faith straight. We need to get our faith straight. The minute you do this and you turn back to the deen of Allah, the humiliation will be lifted. 
the help of Allah is imminent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the right understanding of this deen. May he help us to turn to him. Ameen. I would like to conclude the sermon with a few prayers. Please do say Ameen. Ya Rahman, the most gracious, shower your boundless mercy upon our hearts, Ya Allah. Shower your mercy upon our homes and upon our communities, Ya Allah, and upon the oppressed wherever they may be, Ya Allah. Ya Hafiz, Ya Allah, the guardian, extend your divine protection over the lands of Palestine. Shield its people from harm, Ya Allah, and cover them in your safety, Ya Allah. Ya Mu'min, the giver of peace, grant peace to the hearts of the oppressed, Ya Allah. Lift the yoke of tyranny from their necks, Ya Allah, and replace their fear, their khawf with safety, Ya Allah. Ya Qawi, the strong, fortify the hearts of our Palestinian brethren, Ya Allah, with unyielding resilience that they may stand strong amidst the trials and tribulations. Ya Sabur, the patient, soak our hearts with patience, Ya Allah. Cloak our souls with resilience, Ya Allah, and let our spirits fly high amidst the storm of tribulations. Ya Adil, the just, Hasten the dawn of justice over the lands overshadowed by oppression, Ya Allah. Let the scales of justice prevail over the forces of tyranny and oppression, Ya Allah. Ya Haq, the truth, hasten the day when the rights of the oppressed in Palestine are restored, when justice prevails and tranquility reigns in their lands, Ya Allah. Ya Wahid, the one, unite our hearts, mend the fractures of our communities, and let us stand united firm as one Ummah, Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, against the forces of oppression and injustice. Ya Hadi, the guide, guide our leaders to the path of justice, instill in them the courage to stand for the truth and the wisdom to lead with compassion and fairness. Ya Rahim, the most merciful, grant the highest ranks in Jannah to the martyrs, to the shuhada. Provide comfort to their families and let their sacrifices be a beacon of hope and resistance against oppression, Ya Allah. Ya Muhaymin, the protector, shelter the innocent hearts of the children. Let them dream freely, Ya Allah. They are waking up to the sounds of explosions, Ya Allah. Guard them from the horrors of war and grant them a future of peace, education and prosperity, Ya Allah. Ya Kafi, the sufficient, provide refuge to those driven from their homes. Return them safely to their lands, to their beautiful homes and restore their dignity and their hope, Ya Allah. Ya Shafi, the healer, extend your healing touch to the wounded, to the sick, to the hearts heavy with sorrow, and mend the hearts, mend the scars of our souls, Ya Allah. Ya Nasir, the helper, extend your divine assistance to us, Ya Allah. Uphold the banner of truth through your aid, Ya Allah. And let not the forces of darkness and falsehood triumph, Ya Allah. Ya Ghaffar, the forgiving, forgive our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Forgive our mistakes, forgive our wrongdoings, forgive our heedlessness, forgive our carelessness, purify our actions, and Ya Allah, let not our sins be a barrier to your mercy and your guidance, Ya Allah. Ya Wadud, the loving, Ya Allah, safeguard the innocent eyes of the Palestinian children, Ya Allah. Gift them a future filled with peace, education, and the fulfillment of dreams, Ya Allah. Ya Razak, the provider, provide comfort, provide patience and strength to the elders, to the women of Palestine, Ya Allah, to the families of Palestine, Ya Allah, to our brethren in Palestine, Ya Allah, to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, honoring their years with the sweetness of serenity and peace, Ya Allah. Ya Salam, the source of peace, spread the wings of peace over the troubled lands, Ya Allah. 
Extinguish the flames of hatred, Ya Allah. Fill the earth with love, Ya Allah. With compassion, Ya Allah. With kindness, Ya Allah. With empathy, Ya Allah. With understanding and tranquility, Ya Allah. Ya Mu'iz, the honorer, rekindle the light of faith in our hearts, Ya Allah. Strengthen the bonds of brotherhood amongst us, Ya Allah. Keep us united, Ya Allah. Let us respect one another, Ya Allah. And restore the honor and the dignity of this Ummah, Ya Allah. Ya Mujib, the responder to du'as, the responder to prayers. Accept our humble du'as, Ya Allah. We have raised our hands on this Friday, Ya Allah. Accept our du'as, guide our steps on the path of righteousness and grant us a good ending in this world and a beautiful beginning in the hereafter, Ya Allah. And just as how you united us here in this masjid, unite us in the gardens of Jannah, in the companionship of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, and bless us all to drink at the Hawd, at the fountain through the blessed hands of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Ameen, ameen. Wa akhir da'wa ya'ani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. سمع الله لمن حمده اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله علانيته وسر فأهلنا أنت أن تحمد وأهلنا أنت أن تعبد وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد اللهم في يوم الجمعة اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا المرابطين في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم إنا نستودعك القدس وأهلها اللهم إنا نستودعك القدس وأهلها اللهم كلهم في فلسطين اللهم كلهم في فلسطين اللهم كلهم في فلسطين اللهم كلهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم فرج همهم اللهم نفس كربهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم يا منتقم يا جبار عليك بمن ظلمهم عليك بعدوهم عليك بعدوك وعدوهم يا عزيز يا جبار اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى اللهم طهر المسجد الأقصى من اليهود الغاسبين يا عزيز يا جبار اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
صلى الله على النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله أكبر